More off the field trouble for Jamison Williams and Colton Pouncey joins us. You are Locked On Lions, your daily Detroit Lions podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We got a busy show here on a Tuesday, everybody. It's Locked On Lions right here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Matt Derry with you on a Tuesday, October 29th and a Wednesday, October 30th. Thank you, everybody, for making us your first listen and checking us out wherever you get your podcast. Locked On Lions today. Brought to you by Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code all lowercase locked on NFL to win $50 instantly when you play $5. A lot to get into today. Colton Pouncey is going to join us from theathletic.com. We have breaking news just as we were getting set to record this afternoon. Now, bear in mind, my interview with Colton was earlier today. So I don't have the opportunity and didn't have the opportunity because we weren't aware of it to discuss the Jamison Williams situation. Because, yes, uh, once again, J-Mo in some trouble. According to Ross Jones and the investigators at Channel 7, Jamison Williams avoided arrest after a gun was found in his car recently. We will get into all of that uh, right here on Locked On Lions today. Colton Pouncey coming up in a little bit. Peter Bukowski, Locked On Packers, the most hated man in Detroit. Uh, the host of Lockdown Packers will join us Thursday for the Thursday crossover. No moves have been made yet. Lions have not made any trades. We are a week away from the NFL trade deadline. Deontay Johnson, the very good wide receiver down in Carolina, was traded today to the Baltimore Ravens. But otherwise, uh, Brad Holmes continues to work the phones, and we'll see if any moves are made with a week to go before the trade deadline. All right, uh, I'm going away from, I was going to be playing some audio of Bill Belichick from the Let's Go podcast on Sirius, talking about talking to Jared Goff this week about the Lions offense. Belichick said it was unstoppable. It was really, really cool. When you got to get to this story, which was just recently posted at uh, WXYZ.com, my buddy Ross Jones, investigative reporter down there, does a great job uh, at Channel 7. I love Ross. Uh, Ross reports that two weeks before he was suspended for violating the NFL's performance-enhancing substance policy, Lions wideout Jamison Williams was nearly arrested by Detroit police over a gun found in his vehicle. As a result, questions by Channel 7, the police department is investigating why Williams was released from custody after officers, officers planned to take him to jail. Star wideout, uh, Star wideout came into contact with police after midnight on October the 8th, when police pulled over a vehicle being driven by Williams's brother near the corner of Connor and Jefferson Avenue in Detroit. When questioned by a policeman, Williams's brother disclosed that there were two guns in the car, the first laid in the back seat, while the second, according to police, was under Williams's seat. Officers found that gun in the back seat was registered to Williams's brother, who had a concealed pistol license or CPL, while the gun under Williams's seat was registered to him but he did not possess a CPL. The officer concluded that that was a problem and told JMO he was going to be taken into custody for carrying a concealed weapon. Uh, Channel 7 has the body camera footage that shows that the officer does not know who JMO is, but reportedly the wide receiver would remind him, quote, I play for the Lions, bro. I'm Jamison Williams. Minutes later, he said, bro, I play for the Detroit Lions. Minutes after that, he said one more time, I play for the Lions. The officer told Williams that his position did not influence whether it would be arrested at one point during the stop, Williams' brother told police that the gun belongs to him, but later on, J-Mo would admit that the gun was his. I got the gun for protection, J-Mo said. Do you guys know where I live at? Detroit. Williams was handcuffed, placed in the back of the squad car. In an interview on Monday, police commander Michael McGinnis supported the officer's actions, blah, blah, blah. Sergeant came on the scene, and apparently after over the next 30 minutes, the sergeant would make a series of phone calls trying to determine if Williams needed to be arrested or if the driver's CPL covered both him and J-Mo's guns. Um, at one point, the sergeant is seen leaning into one of the arresting officers, whispering, I'm so mad at you two. But apparently, uh, they then let him go. He did not press charges for, he was taken out of handcuffs, gun was returned, police report was not written, and no warrant was written for arrest. Chief James White was very unhappy about the totality of the circumstances here, even it goes as far as saying he was ticked off, said Commander McGinnis. 
Look, you can read the story at WXYZ.com. Here's the bottom line. The Lions need Jamison Williams if they're going to go to the Super Bowl. The Lions need Jamison Williams to not be pulled over with a gun after midnight in Detroit. Another story off the field regarding JMO, who will not play Sunday because, of course, right now he's uh, serving the second game of his two-game suspension for a performing performance-enhancing substance. You guys know how I feel about this. When's this going to end? Now, he should have been arrested, it sounds like, but was not. Channel 7 is investigating. Doesn't sound like Chief Craig was very happy. Because if you don't have a permit, and you're carrying a concealed weapon, you're usually arrested. The bottom line is he's driving around Detroit with, with friends, cousins, whatever, with a gun in the car. And he's on the Lions. What are we doing here? What are we doing here? So the saga continues. Certainly now the Lions and Dan Campbell will be questioned about this tomorrow um, in his news conference. I, I wanted to talk about Jared Goff getting flowers from Bill Belichick. I love Bill Belichick on the on podcast and TV now and on Pat McAfee. That's a lot of fun. Belichick, we're seeing some personality from him. He says the Lions offense is unstoppable. But yet here we are again today having to talk about another off-the-field indiscretion from Jamison Williams. The Lions have got to get him on the straight and narrow here. Enough's enough. He's too important. He's too good of a player, but he just keeps screwing up. So, not a good scene, folks. Not a good scene at all as the Lions get ready to take on the Packers on Sunday at 425. Lions did make one move today. Christian Mahogany, their seventh-round pick in the offensive lineman from Boston College, who's been sick. I think he had mono and other things um, going on throughout training camp in the first part of the season. He has been activated and placed on the team's 53-man roster. Always was kind of intrigued with him and how the Lions would utilize him. And now he's going to get an opportunity and at least be on the active roster um, coming up this week. And again, I expect Brad Holmes to make a move. I really do. I expect some sort of move to be made in terms of uh, acquiring an edge rusher. I know some of you want to want to send me text messages about, oh, Chase Young. I don't see the Lions going after Chase Young. I heard an interesting name today on, on, on Valenny and Rico's show when they were talking about Calais Campbell, who I know is like 100 years old, but would be a nice locker room fit. The guy that I know at like 37 years old down in Miami playing for a bad Dolphin team, um, you could get him for a late round pick and it would be a nice addition. And I've talked about Aziz Ojolari from the Giants, saw him have a sack last night in the Monday night game against the Steelers. We saw Arden Key. Uh, you got to figure at some point here, um, Brad Holmes is going to pull the trigger. I just don't think it's going to be a, a blockbuster move, but I've been wrong before. All right, coming up next, Colton Pouncey will join us from the athletic.com Lions beat writer. Again, we talked to Colton earlier today before this JMO news, hence why I don't ask him about the uh, Jamison Williams uh, gun issue that took place, according to WXYZ Channel 7 and Ross Jones. We'll talk to Colton about the trade deadline and the Lions and Packers coming up next. Locked on Lions today, proudly sponsored by FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Get ready to tackle the NFL action with FanDuel they are the America's number one sports book because right now new customers can get, can bet $5 and get $150 in bonus bets if you win. The FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL all in one place. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, -play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. Just visit FanDuel.com to join today. That's FanDuel.com. You'll get started with $150 in bonus bets. If you win your first $5 bet, that's FanDuel.com. Never waste a hunch and make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports book partner of the NFL. And we're proudly brought to you today also by our friends at Hillsdale College. Folks, time is our most precious commodity, isn't it? So don't waste it scrolling through the same 
mind-numbing content for hours and hours on end on your phone? How can you spend it more wisely to improve yourself? How about our friends at Hillsdale College? Our sponsor, Hillsdale, is offering more than 40 free, that's right, free online courses, including Constitution 101, Introduction to Free Market Economics, The Great American Story, A Land of Hope, The Rise and Fall of the Roman Republic, and so much more. All of Hillsdale's courses are self-paced, so you can start whenever and tune in wherever. Plus, you can go deeper with readings, quizzes, discussions, or just enjoy the lectures. Go right now to hillsdale.edu slash lockdown to enroll. There's no cost. It's easy to get started. That's hillsdale.edu slash lockdown to register. Hillsdale.edu slash lockdown. All right, as promised, ladies and gentlemen, if you're not following this man at theathletic.com or subscribing, you should. He covers the Lions for The Athletic. Colton Pouncey with us today, today on a Tuesday. Colton, great to see you as always. Absolutely, Matt. Uh, thanks for having me. How you been? What's going on? Been good, man. Season's rolling around. Uh, it feels like it's going pretty quick, but also, as I mentioned before the show, I'm kind of feeling it right now, the early bye week. I wish we had a week 10 one. That'd be nice right now. But, uh, you know, season's rolling on, and it's been fun. At least you're not going to Green Bay this weekend in a in snow or a blizzard, right? I mean, that's kind yeah. of a positive. That's always a positive. You never want to go to Green Bay in the middle of that. But uh, yeah, it should be a good game this weekend, man. Like two really good teams, um, a lot on the line with NFC North implications. So yeah, that should be a good one. I want to get to Green Bay. We'll talk about the trade deadline in a second. Thoughts on this past weekend? It was kind of a weird game. I mean, the Lions blew them out, and it's like up oh, six and one. And I said yesterday on the show, this is the best team in the NFC yet things still to clean up as they kind of torched a really bad football team. Yeah, for sure. It definitely was a weird game. I think I tweeted maybe early in the second quarter that the Lions could put up 50 and only have 250 yards. I think they finished with 52 and 225. So uh, that kind of told you kind of how that game went. Um, the offense, actually, I don't know if they even had their best day. Um, you know, Dan Campbell and Jared Goff both said they could have been better um, on that side of the ball. But when you're special teams and defense are, are making plays the way they are. I guess you don't really need the offense to, you know, move the ball as, as they usually do because um, you got four turnovers defensively. Um, Khalif Raymond and Khalil Dorsey kind of put them in great positions all day on, this, on the return um, unit over there. So, uh, yeah, pretty unique game. I don't think I've ever seen a game like that where a lot of the damage was coming from defense and special teams and those turnovers and, and whatnot. But getting to 52 points and having a very comfortable win in your own building is what you want on a Sunday. Do enough people talk about Dave Fipp enough? Um, I know I don't and probably need to. I know he's very entertaining, beloved in that locker room, but he's a damn good special teams coach and could be a difference maker for this team, don't you think? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Dave Fipp, I think, is one of the best special teams coordinators in the league. Um, I think you, you kind of see it with his eye for talent, whether it's Jake Bates, um, Jack Fox, even Hogan Hatton, the long snapper, who's done a good job. And if you watch some of those some of those plays, he's always downfield and usually the first one to get there to cover um, so he's doing a good job over there. Uh, you know, Dave, Dave Fipp got a game ball after the, um, after the game in the locker room from Dan Campbell. And I actually asked Campbell about him yesterday, just how important he is to the staff and the overall operation had great things to say about him. He's been here for four years and, um, really one of the, one of the key pieces and core coaches on the staff. So, um, does not get enough credit. He's a great guy. Um, we love talking to him. Um, great personality, some, some good stories from players, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, he does a great job over there. They need to give him a game ball more often. He's kind of entertaining uh, in the locker room. You know, sometimes yep. they tell the players, they all say speech, and the guy says, oh, love the, love you guys, and it's the usual. He's fun, man. He, you <laughs> never know what's coming out of his mouth. That's got to be a fun guy to cover. No doubt. He's got a great personality. I love talking to him every every Thursday because he always has a, a cool story for us or just a, even his insight into special teams, you know, share stuff with us that I would never even think of. Um, and so I think that kind of speaks to how good of a coach he is and just all the details that go through his mind on, on a given Sunday. So. Yeah, the Lions are looking to have him for sure. So we're a week away from the deadline. Uh, I know Dan Campbell was on the ticket this morning, was asked about it again, and said, look, you guys are making too much of this and what I said <laughs> yesterday and the jumping up and down after Dave Burkett's question. But where do you honestly think it is right now with Brad Holmes? And could it be two moves to get maybe a pair of edge rushers, you know, maybe go, uh, you know, uh, Ojolari and Key or something like that where it's two guys as opposed to the one big home run? Yeah, it depends on, on, I think, maybe their evaluation even Sunday's game. Um, you know, I think they got some good pressure from some of the guys that they – the recent guys that they added. So if they feel good about that, then maybe they only make one move. Um, but I still think they do need to add someone just because 
Um, even if you have the room as it stands right now, like this is a long NFL season. There's still half a, half a year left. Um, you've already lost your two starting edge rushers. So injuries happen all the time and you never know who can go down. Um, Josh Pascoe had to miss last week with, I think, a, a cancer checkup um, treatment sort of situation. So you never know what can pop up in, in the middle of the season. So I think just getting some more depth in there is a good good thing for all parties. Um, I don't think it has to be a Max Crosby level player. And I don't, th- I don't think it will be because it sounds like they don't want to trade him. Same thing with Miles Garrett. Um, but if you can get like a mid-level guy or a guy that can even do half of what Hutch was giving you, um, I think you feel pretty good about that with the defensive tackles they have and how disruptive they are. Linebackers are cleaning things up in the second level. And the secondary making plays with Brian Ranch and, and Kirby Joseph, your safeties there. So I think the defense has enough pieces where you don't need this game-changing talent, but I do think they need to add someone just for, for depth sakes. I thought they should just grab Arden Key on the way out, out, out to the bus the other yeah. day and just tell him, hey, listen, go to that other locker room and stay there because <laughs> he had a whale of a game. And obviously Taylor Decker had some issues with him, but that would be, to me, a kind of a fit for them, don't you think? Yeah, I think a guy like that would make a lot of sense. Um, you know, a guy that probably won't cost you a first or second. You know, I don't think Brad wants to give up too many of those valuable picks. Um, but if you can get a guy for a third, a fourth, a fifth, um, that can just come in here and do some things, be disruptive on occasion, and um, just be a guy on on this team. And I think a defense has enough pieces to kind of survive the loss of, of Hutch if you do get one guy, one more guy in there like that. So, yeah, I mean, it would have made sense to just say, hey, man, just why don't you just pack up, make yourself <laughs> <All> right. <laughs> You're already here. Colton yep. Pouncey with us from The Athletic covers the Lions. Um, on that front, of all the guys, Muhammad, Thomas, James Houston, of all those guys, do you sense somebody stepping up? Do you have a, a feel for one of them that could end up being somebody? And obviously, Levi's played a lot of edge, but is there one of that group, Uku, any of these guys that you think, all right, maybe by the end of the year, he's going he's gonna to be okay? You know, I think Muhammad kind of caught my eye the other day. I, I believe he finished with six pressures in that game, and, um, you know, that's a decent amount. I think the Lions edge rushers last week only got four pressures combined. Um, so that kind of tells you what he was able to do in that game. So I think the more more he gets comfortable, I think you can expect a little bit more and maybe some consistency going forward is, is probably what they're looking for. Um, you know, some of the other guys I think probably need some more developing. Like Isaac Uku, I don't know if he was exactly ready for that role. He's, you know, UDFA um rookie so he's still learning in the nfl but um yeah i would like to see more of isaiah thomas i think i think he did some, some decent things like he he's a guy they liked a long body out there and got him off cleveland so um you know that'd be interesting to me as well but we'll see I, I, again i think they need to make a move for another guy um but if you can get one more guy and then those guys keep developing and learning the system then i think you can feel pretty good interesting i got a text yesterday from somebody said oh there's rumors on twitter and again it's twitter chase young I look at players like that, that doesn't, Chase Young to me just doesn't fit the Lions. You know, he's jogging in the NFC Championship game, Chase chasing Jameer Gibbs. That, How much stock do you put Colton in Brad Holmes finding Lions as opposed to just making a trade? Yeah, I don't think he's the type to just make a trade to make a trade. Um, it's the same way he approaches the draft. He's not just going to draft an edge rusher because you tell him they need an edge rusher or because the national people say you need a corner. There's a reason he waited on on Terry on Arnold for all these years because the right corner wasn't available. Um, So he's not just going to reach for a player because it's a position of need. Um, He's going to draft the best player on his board. I think he wants to trade for good players. Um, And so we even had this conversation last year with Chase Young. It's like, yeah, he was on the market and he went to a, you know, conference contender in the 49ers. Um, But at the same time, I'd I'd never really thought he was a fit. Um, There's some questionable effort that shows up on his tape. Um, He's got all the talent in the world, just hasn't been able to put together. And so last year he went for a third round pick. That felt like a lot for the Lions to give up with where they were back then. Now, the reason I say that back then is because things have kind of changed a little bit. I don't think the Lions were publicly saying that we're a Super Bowl contender. We should be making these types of moves. Um, this year, they're a little bit more open about that and saying, look, we have a team that can get to the Super Bowl. Uh, multiple people have said this on this roster and on this coaching staff. So if you feel that way, maybe this is a little bit different where you feel more comfortable trading some of those picks to make make a move and get a guy like that. Um, I still don't know if it's going to be a Chase Young type. I still think it has to be the right player and the right combination to fit. Could be the game of the year on Sunday, 425. Lions at Green Bay and Lambeau Field to take on the 6-2 and two Packers. I want to talk about that with Colton and the rest of the NFC. We'll do that coming up next here on a Tuesday. Locked on Lions. 
But first, Locked on Lions brought to you by Prize Picks. If you watched the Monday night game last night and you were bored or you're like, God, Giants, Steelers, this is nothing special, but you wanted to have some fun, put some money down on the game, and maybe it wasn't just about the teams, you should have played Prize Picks, the best place to get real money sports action with over 10 million members and billions of dollars in awarded winnings. Prize Picks has made daily fantasy accessible to everybody. And it's simple. You pick more than or less than on at least two player stat projections for your chance to win up to 100 times a uh, hundred times your cash. It is that simple. And it's a lot of fun. Last night, for example, if you had, uh, you know, more than uh, George Pickens or Najee Davenport, or Najee Harris, I should say, numbers in terms of receiving yards or rushing yards, you would have been good to go. If you would have had Daniel Jones less, you would have been good to go as well. It's a lot of fun. It's a way to watch the game. You want to do it Sunday for Lions Packers and uh, think Jaden Reed's going to do well, maybe more than or less than about 60 yards receiving. Put some money down that as well. It is simple. Download the app today at Prize Picks. Use the code Lockdown NFL to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. Use code Locked on NFL. Get that free 50 bucks. Prize Picks run your game. Tuesday Locked on Lions. Colton Pouncey with us from theathletic.com. Please subscribe and uh, check out uh, what they do at The Athletic. Everybody's great there. Colton does a great job. Covering the Lions. All right. Uh, excited to go to, obviously, it's always exciting to go to Green Bay. But the timing of this game, where this game is right now, and how well the Packers are playing, uh, to me, are there, to you, are these the best two teams in the NFC playing this weekend? There's a good chance. I mean, w- with record, they're definitely up there. Uh, it, the NFC is kind of weird right now. There are a lot of teams that are kind of jumbled up in the pack right now. Not a ton of separation. Um, Lions at 6-1, and one, Packers at 6-2 and two are kind of near the top right now. So I think... In terms of timing of this game, it is a marquee matchup in the conference and um, really the, the division. And I think really when you look at these teams, they all have a chance to get a number one seed if they keep winning. Um, so, yeah, it's a big game for sure. You look at where the Packers are. Obviously, they've kind of squeaked by the last couple of weeks, but still wins at six and two. How close do you think they are to the Lions? Yeah, it's tough to say. I don't know if they played their best game yet. Um, I do like a lot of their, their pieces offensively. I think um, it's a really good young offense led by led by um, Jordan Love over there. Um, but I, I do question some of the wins that, on their schedule. I think the Lions have kind of been more impressive, and they're they're winning these games really um, convincingly when you look at the Lions' schedule and what the Packers are doing compared in comparison. Um, so so yeah, I mean, I, I like this this Packers team. I think it'll be a tough one on the road, but I, at the same time, I like the Lions and what they're doing for sure. It's funny, you know, Dan Campbell has got accolades. The staff is great. We know that. Green Bay and Matt LaFleur, what they've done with Malik Willis, yeah. who has come in now and pinch hit for, for love on numerous occasions. They, he's won three games for them this year. What does that say about where the Packers are in terms of their coaching? I mean, there's some really good coaches. There's also one really bad coach in this division, but there's <laughs> some really good coach in this division that uh, has made it uh, so competitive. Yeah, I think you have three of the best offensive minds in the NFC North and in the floor O'Connell and and Ben Johnson. So it's, it's really fun watching these teams do what they're doing and really watching the Packers, what they were able to do with Malik Willis to keep that thing afloat. Cause I thought when Jordan Love went down, they might be in trouble. And that was the exact opposite just because of the type of coach he is. He puts him in position to succeed a ton of playmakers and just let Malik Willis be comfortable in in that offense. So that was really impressive that the fact that he was able to keep him afloat. Now we'll see if he's, at quarterback this week, it sounds like Jordan Love only had a minor groin strain. Maybe he'll try to play through it. I think they're just going to monitor it this week. But um, if it is Malik Willis, I, I I don't. I have confidence that they'll be able to keep things afloat and that he'll play well. It's just a matter of who who, who wins that one in the end. This team has gone into Green Bay the last two years and won. How how important is that? Do you, do you take any stock into that as they go in there this weekend? Yeah, for sure. They're not afraid to play in Green Bay. Maybe there is a time where that used to be a daunting task, but it's really not anymore. I mean, last time they played, Amaral um, St. Brown was blowing kisses at the crowd after that game. <laughs> <laughs> Brad Holmes was going around high-fiving oh, fans yeah. in the stands. Yeah. So um, they certainly made themselves feel at home. Like, I remember Lions fans kind of flooded down to the the, you know, the bottom of that stereo uh, stadium, uh, the, the first row there, and kind of um, made their presence felt. So I imagine if the team gives them something to cheer for, they'll do the same thing this time around. And um, they'll leave happy. Colton, you said it before. Green Bay, good young receiving core, four guys that, that touch the ball a lot. And this line secondary, definitely better. I mean, it hard, hard to get any worse than it was last year in terms of that cornerback room. They've made good strides, but mm-hmm. Ridley kind of went off in that first quarter the other day. How concerned are you about this matchup with Arnold, Carlton Davis, and those guys 
against that Packer wide receiver room. Yeah, it'll be a big test. I mean, I, I love Jaden Reed. I cover him in Michigan State. I think he's one of the best young receivers in football and really probably doesn't get enough credit. He's still underrated, I think. Um, they got some really good receivers over there, and LaFleur put some positions to, to win their matchups. Um, so it'll be tough for sure. Like, I think Terion will have his work cut out for him. Um, but at the same time, like, these guys have a challenge mentality. They're going to try to um, win their matchups, and they're not afraid of these receivers at the same time. So, um, the other thing is, I think Jordan Love is a bit of a gunslinger out there. I, I know he's been ca- compared to Aaron Rodgers. I think he has more Brett Favre than him than Rodgers. Um, just he has a lot of trust in his arm, and he should. You know, he's got a great arm, really talented dude, but um, he'll throw off his back foot and lob some balls that shouldn't be lobbed. And when you're doing that against a secondary like this with Kirby Joseph and Brian Branch, that can go the other way. So they'll have to be careful and take care of the football. Man, you just said it. I think the Packers are glad they divorced themselves from Aaron Rodgers. hundred <laughs> percent. No doubt. My goodness. All right. Uh, rest of the NFC. You mentioned it. Uh, Green Bay is tied with uh, Washington at six and two behind the Lions. What team in there of that group of, you mentioned it before, kind of jumbled at the top of the NFC. Is there mm-hmm. one that stands out to you that you go, man, they could push Detroit? Yeah, I look for talent at this point because I think it's we're still learning a lot and maybe the schedules haven't evened out yet, but um i still like philly i know they're kind of a weird team but like they have so much talent and i think they're young the young dbs that they drafted are, are really helping them at this point cooper yeah. dejean quinion mitchell i love coming out of uh toledo so like they got some dudes over there i think um and enough talent to compete with the lions um you know i i, I do like this commanders team i didn't think i would like it as much as i do but i mean jay daniels has kind of turned that franchise around um and even the 49ers, I'm not ruling them out yet because it sounds like they're going to get Chris McCaffrey back. I know they're down some key pieces, but um, I still think that, what are they, four and four? They can you know keep this thing afloat and um, try to get back in the mix there. So there are some teams that are jumbled up for sure. I still like the Vikings as well. Um, you know, they'll have to kind of get back on track here after losing two. But there's some teams in there that I think can give the Lions a push if um, it comes to it. Cold, great to see you. Keep up the great work, and uh, we'll do it again soon. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, Matt. Colton Pouncey with us from theathletic.com. Please read his stuff, subscribe, and check it out. I'm on there daily. On a Tuesday, Locked on Lions. Don't forget the crossover on Thursday with the most hated man in Detroit, Peter Bukowski of Locked on Packers. Join us on Thursday.